Welcome back, guys. This is Believe in Rams. I'm Jake Ellenbogen. He is Cameron Lynch, and this is episode 175. Woo. Uh, we are here today. We got some uh, great stuff for you. We actually have a great guest, Jay Tuck, Dallas Cowboys analyst. He's going to come on. He's going to teach us a little bit about the Cowboys, how they can win this game, and how they can ultimately lose this game. Before yeah. we get into that, a word from our sponsor, uh, Underdog Fantasy Camp. Yeah, you can start playing Pick'em or Weekly Fantasy for any sport today. Users will receive a 100% deposit match up to $100 if they use promo code BELIEVEINRAMS at sign up. Start playing Pick'em and Weekly Fantasy Football today with Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy. Well, Cam, I know it's a football podcast, but you <laughs> do have the NBA starting while we're recording this. I mean, literally, I yeah. think like in an hour. Right. So it's not just football that you can use underdog fantasy for. You can also, if you feel like LeBron James is going to have more than say 25 points, throw it in there, yep. but use promo code believe in Rams to get started. You know, you can also get started using BetOnline.ag, which is your number one source for all your betting needs this season. Get the latest odds, lines, and match reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games, available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. So, Cam, we're going to send everyone over to the interview. We had a great time. Uh, talking ball with Jay Tuck, yeah. and he's a, a fellow uh, KU fan, so <laughs> it was uh, it was a little fun for me. I, I was in my element, Cam. You were in your element the last time when we had uh, Siciliano on, but yeah, uh, but yeah, it Here's, was a good uh, show. good show. Yeah, good show. Uh, you guys will enjoy it, and uh, we'll see you guys on the flip. Welcome back, guys. This is Believe in Rams. I'm Jake Ellenbogen. He is Cameron Lynch. And we have a very special guest. We have Cowboys analyst Jay Tuck here. Uh, guy that, you know, we had uh, Syracuse guys on Cam, Andrew Siciliano. <laughs> uh, now we got to bring on Jay Tuck, who's a Kansas guy. Love to feel that. You Respect. see the Kansas Jayhawks stuff in the background. Jay Tuck, how you doing, man? Doing good. Doing good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm a huge Kansas Jayhawks fan. Rock Chalk. You know, I love what they're doing football wise, but definitely that basketball logo and those banners. <laughs> nothing like it. So if you've never been to a sports venue, Allen Fieldhouse is definitely the place you want to go to because there's nothing like it on the planet. I love Allen Fieldhouse. Yeah. Hopefully y'all line up against Syracuse in basketball this year. That'll be that'll be nice. <laughs> yeah, just the rematch. They got a nice schedule coming up, so it's gonna be a fun. Yep. We got Carmelo Suns coming. You know Syracuse maybe. So hey, we'll we'll see how <laughs> how things go. <laughs> oh man. So uh, getting into this thing, we got the Rams. We got the Cowboys. It's week eight. Uh, this is actually a pretty decent game. We don't know how good the Rams are going to be moving on. We do know the Cowboys are a good football <laughs> team right now. And this could have some serious playoff implications when you think about the tiebreakers at this point in the season. Um, so just looking at this game, Jay Tuck, we'll start with you. Three keys to victory for the Cowboys against the Rams this week. Yeah, I think the most critical aspect is I feel like you're going to have to be more efficient in the red zone, especially for the Dallas Cowboys offensive standpoint. There has been some struggles if you go back to our game versus the Chargers, even though the Dallas Cowboys were able to pull off that win. The offense just seemed to hasn't been gelling as of yet. So I think it's going to be very important because when you look at this Rams offense, they have some explosive weapons with Cooper Cub. You have Fukunuka, one of my favorite uh, guys in, in, in Tutu Atwell. You know, he killed my, my yeah. nose when he was at Louisville. So they definitely have <laughs> offensive firepower out there. So I feel like the Cowboys are going to need to get into a rhythm. And most importantly, also from a run game standpoint, defensively, once again, I feel like our secondary is going to need to step up with the absence of Trayvon Diggs. Our secondary isn't the best. It's OK, but we kind of went from that elite status to kind of an unknown. So, you know, having the older Stefan Gilmore cover the speed that you guys have with your wide receiver core, I think is going to be a challenge. And then most importantly, it is stopping the run. Like, even though you guys aren't, quote unquote, a run team, you're able to put up a massive amount of yards on the ground. And that's been the Cowboys Achilles heel thus far is stopping the ground game. So I feel like if you're able to put up points, play solid in secondary, get pressure and stop the run, I feel like the Cowboys should fare well with this matchup. But this is a matchup. But. 
don't, I really don't like this game. I really don't like this game. I don't want to use, I don't want to say trap game, but it's a game that me as a Cowboys fan analyst, I really don't like. These are the games that gives us trouble. Post buy, it could get a little spooky. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. post buy. It's a noon game. You know, a lot of people are going to be at the Rangers World Series game Saturday night, so the fans, <laughs> yeah. might be, you know, a little tired on Sunday. You got <laughs> Stafford coming back home to Dallas, where he always tried to showcase his talent and kind of have a welcome home party. And like I said, the explosiveness of your offense, it kind of creates a difficulty as far as our matchup is concerned. So you know, I don't really see can Mike McCarthy settle this team in and get them to lock in and get this victory. Yeah, could get a little spooky. Uh, Jake, I'll jump in really quick with mine, and then I'll pass it over to you, figure out how we can beat up on them Cowboys. But <laughs> <laughs> I will say this. We talk about beating up on the Cowboys. I don't think that's going to go the way that we envision it. We dream it, right, as Rams fans. This is going to be a revenge game for some folks in the Cowboys. I'm going to talk about three phases. One, John Fossil. We call him Coach Bones. Special teams ace, one of the best special team coaches in the league. So if I'm the Rams team, John Fossil with the Rams. He, I was there with John Fossil, right? I, I earned my career in the NFL because he taught me the ways to play special teams in the NFL. When you're undrafted, you've got to play special teams, and he's, he's a genius at that. And so he's at the Rams for a long time. And, and Jake and Jay Tuck, there's going to be a fake punt, a fake something. <laughs> <laughs> Just book it now. Book it now. I guarantee you the Rams going to Jerry World. I guarantee you Bones is drawing something up on his chalkboard like, hey, my old team's coming in town. We need to kick their ass. I guarantee you. So expect a fake. You know, Turpin back there is going to be a, a dangerous point for the Rams as well. So keep an eye on him. But that's the special teams. Second, Fowler, right? Defensive end going at Matthew Stafford. Fowler won the championship with the Rams. This is a revenge game, right? They're going to Jerry World. Jerry World. The Rams are going into his home. So I think he's going to be super, super active off that edge. So Hendo, we're going to need a little check on Fowler, right, when you go out for that pass because he's going to be coming – uh, full seam ahead. And then also, lastly, the defensive backs. Jay Tuck, you talk about your DBs at the Cowboys, but the Rams DBs as well. We need to tackle the football, right? CD Lamb going across there, uh, Pollard as well. Those two specifically, we need to put hats on those guys. Oh, and then let me not forget on the offensive side, Cooks as well, right? We got Cooks uh, on the offensive side. I think that's a revenge game for him. So there's three phases that we got to watch out for. In regard to the, re the the revenge athletes, there's specific athletes and different people that are looking for a revenge game for the Cowboys, and so we got to watch out for those guys. Jake, I'll pass it to you. Any other thoughts on that? Yeah, you know, Cam, I think looking at you know last uh, last week uh, against the Steelers, really unfortunate to see the rookie of the week, Byron Young, have his worst game when he really couldn't have his worst game. Uh, doesn't get any easier. Uh, it was actually a pretty easy matchup, I would say against the Steelers, um, but it's not going to be easy against Tyron Smith. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I think the the key obviously for the Dallas Cowboys, um, the, you know, three keys to victory is one, you, you got to be able to, to test this defense out because you are going to have time to throw the ball and Dak with a clean pocket is as good as any quarterback in the league, which he should be, but he is. And so when he has a clean pocket, he can make things happen. I've also been kind of impressed, like when he's under pressure, he can still make things happen. But the Rams haven't really been able to get consistent pressure. They had two sacks early on with Michael Hoyt against Kenny Pickett, and they got Finally. pressure on him. But <laughs> then the sacks were gone. And then you're, you yeah. all of a sudden, now you have to blitz a safety. Now you have to uh, blitz a linebacker. So I think the key, to, uh, the first key is going to be uh, to take advantage of this defense. They're not going to get a ton of pressure. I don't think it's just miraculously going to happen against this nasty offensive line. Um, so for that, I think you, you really just, you got to hit them quickly uh, with the quick passing game and then open up, of course, the top for Brandon cooks. Uh, number two is going to be Tony Pollard. Tony Pollard absolutely de destroyed this team in 2019 cam. I think you might've been on the team then. I, I don't know if you were on it at that point, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, right, I'm getting flashbacks. <laughs> that was, that was not a good game. Uh, <laughs> a little PTSD there, Jake. I thought you would keep that kind of under the rug there, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I wasn't. I wasn't. Got the rug. <laughs> that was uh brutal. Um, Brutal. but Tony Pollard has also got considerably better since then. Um, and I think his ability in the first off the screen game, but also just what he can do, you know, when he's lined up flexed out wide, when he's just a runner, um, 
I mean, make this Rams team tackle. We've seen it. They've really struggled to tackle this year. And Tony Pollard has great contact balance. He's got great speed, agility, all that. Um, I think he's one of the best running backs in football. So I think he's the number three key and the number, or the, sorry, the number two, number three, get pressure on Matthew Stafford. It's about that simple. Uh, the Rams right now have no identity on the offensive side of the ball. Cam, you know, we were talking about that beforehand. They just don't <laughs> have an identity right now. J talk straight up. Like basically their identity is well, you know, throw it deep down the field. Uh, Puka Nakua or Cooper Cup are, are down there, you know. And it's Cup. like Tutu Atwell is a clear out and a gadget and basically use like Tavon Austin with those jet sweeps. Like they're not even handing it off to him. So you don't really have to worry about that. Um, and then, you know, with the, the run game, you know, they're eventually going to go away from it if you get a big enough lead. Right. Or even if you don't, they just abandon the run. Um, and so really Stafford finds himself in trouble because even though he's banged up right now, even though, you know, he can't move that well because of the hip that he got in, in week four, they still have him late in the game, empty, nobody there, no check down options, nobody in the flat. And everyone is 20 yards downfield. Now he has to run for his life. That's not conducive <laughs> to winning football in general, but it's definitely yeah. not conducive to winning football. When you got guys like Micah Parsons, you have guys like, Kansas, uh, you know, Dorrance Armstrong, you got guys like, uh, Lawrence and, and Fowler, uh, not going to be good. So that's, that's yeah. the other key. Uh, the third key there, you just got to get pressure on Stafford. And I, I, that's the ultimate key because if, if you pressure Stafford throughout the whole game, Sean McVay won't run the football. He won't mitigate, the, <laughs> he won't mitigate the pass rush. And so it's really that. Hey, Tuck, is, this is all frustration, Jay Tuck, yeah, from yeah, us. You guys fit. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, that that's that's where we're at. There, there you go. Three keys <laughs> to victory for the Cowboys. <laughs> Trust me, I've been there. but you know, good thing you kind of mentioned that because I feel like that really plays into the Cowboys' defense's hands. Like that's what they're best at, is getting pressure. But what I've been kind of preaching is you have to earn the right to pass rush. And what a lot of teams have been doing is just running the ball and not putting those their quarterback in those third and long situations. But if you're Sean McVay is going to help us out and just do it automatically, <laughs> we'll definitely take it. And I'll, I'll welcome that opportunity because uh, our pass rush can definitely get out there, especially just rushing with four. And we have our NASCAR package when we, you know, even Osa mm. Nikki Zua, who's a UCLA guy, getting pressure in the interior. Like, that's what the Cowboys defense really feast after. Jay yeah. Tuck, and let's, let's talk about this really quick, Jay Tuck. We talked about on the last show, we talked about the Steelers game. We talked about the run game. We need to run the football. We need to run the football. It was a title of our show. Mm. And uh, Hendo did a little did a little something. You know, it was good to see him get out there. But you think about it, Tony Pollard didn't really get that. He got a lot of carries. He got 15 carries, but only – 30 yards and so Hendo as well, right? Got a couple carries and got some yards as well. So what are you what are you thinking for Tony for Pollard, right? Is he saying, Oh, I didn't touch the ball enough. I need to make sure I run through those gaps this week and make sure the run game is solid. I know there's a lot of screens to his side, but what are you thinking Tony Pollard is thinking for this game coming up here in the run game? Yeah, great question. For me, that's the biggest question mark when it comes to the Dallas Cowboys offense is, is Tony Pollard a bell cow uh, running back? He never has been one in his career, even go back to when he was in Memphis, like he always kind of split carries and he always had Ezekiel Elliott. So is Tony Pollard a guy that you can give 25 carries or possibly 30 carries and get out of the game with a victory? We don't know. And after outside of Tony Pollard, you have a lot of guys who are kind of unproven. Rico Dowdle, um, you also have Hunter Luke. He was an undrafted guy. And then we just brought up Malik Davis, another undrafted guy. So outside of Tony Pollard, the running back game is really a huge question mark. So I think that the Cowboys are going to have to get Tony Pollard involved. They didn't do it versus the Chargers. They for sure didn't do it versus San Fran. But the, the biggest question mark, I don't think is Tony Pollard's ability. I think it's our offensive line. Our offensive line, our starting five, knock on wood, you know, pray, do whatever you got to do. It's only playing their third game together, and it's been a while. So when we're seeing Tyron and Tyler and Tyler and Zach Martin and and also um, and Terrence Steele. So, you know, I want to see them really gel because I feel like if you can't get the run game involved and you're dropping back and you're turning Dak Prescott into Matt Stafford, where a, he's passing 35 times and Stafford's passing 40, then that really kind of leads to, a you know, whatever can happen as far as that the game is concerned. So I really want the Cowboys to focus on getting the run game involved and let that be a point of emphasis uh, offensively. So, And really quick, j Tech is that on the right side of the line of scrimmage or the left side? Because I know Hendo's been running the ball really well on the right side. So what side of that 
<laughs> sorry, what's what's yeah. yeah, what's not a line of scrimmage after the Cowboys? Actually, both, right? We've really been getting gassed on the outsides, and I think you know, in absence of our, our middle linebacker, Leighton Vanderash is out with a neck injury. So we kind of have Damone Clark and we have uh uh, Marquise Bell, who was an undrafted guy out of FAMU, kind of a hybrid safety slash linebacker. So I feel like we've really been getting gas on the outside. The interior has been well, but outside on the edges, you know, it, it's, it's been a crapshoot. <laughs> you go back to that Cardinals game, you know, Connors was running all over. There's running free. So I think that's where the Cowboys really going to have to focus on this stretch is stopping the run. Because after you guys, we got Philly and the list goes on and on from those teams are really going to want to come out and put an emphasis on running the ball. Yeah. And, you know, moving on to the three keys to victory uh, for the Rams, um, Jay Tuck on the outside looking in, what do you think are the three keys to victory for the Rams? Well, I think if you guys can protect Matt Stafford, it could be a long day. Like for me personally, I still have question marks about our corners, even though they played well, they're able to get turnovers. But my question when it comes to Dallas Cowboys defense, if you're not getting sacks and you're not getting turnovers, how good are we really? And I just feel like yeah, what that, are you doing? That's, what, that's what we hang our hat on. It's like just the big turnover, the big interception or the big sack. But in the games that we really struggled, we didn't have that. So if Matt Stafford can protect the ball, like Cooper Cup is going to be a difficult matchup. Puka Nuka, I love them in the draft. Difficult matchup. So if you're able to protect and give him time, it could be a long day for the Dallas Cowboys defense. And then offensively, once again, it's just I feel like we're struggling just getting into a rhythm with our wide receivers. One name you didn't mention was Michael Gallup. Like Michael mm. Gallup really hasn't evolved and emerged to his 2019 self coming off the post ACL where he's supposed to be our big down the field, you know, vertical threat. We just really haven't seen that. And then also our young tight ends, our young tight ends and Jake Ferguson. And then also you have Luke Schoonmaker, who was our second round pick out of Michigan. I think he has one catch for one touchdown. Like it's just, so it just really hasn't evolved yet to where we're seeing that middle of the field seam stretcher. And so I think if you're able to get pressure up front and drop seven back in zone, that's been the Cowboys. Maybe I'm saying too much, but that's been the Cowboys <laughs> uh, thus far defensively. So those are kind of the keys for victory from the outside looking in that I think the Rams should really kind of go out there and do the, the cause problems on Sunday. Cam, what say you? Yeah, no, it's it's funny you say that, Jay Tuck. Just about <laughs> that those you talked about the tight ends not you know not doing too well and where y'all at Gallup, the same thing. I just have a feeling, Jay Tuck, come this game, and my key to victory would be, would be to cover the, those guys that you just mentioned, Gallup and Schoonmaker, right? Because you think about it, if you're calling it out now, like, hey, these guys haven't really you know stepped up like that. There's been an off. There's been a, a bye week. So what do you think the folks in the front office are saying? Hey. We just drafted this guy, and I haven't seen many catches from him. This has been the off week. I need his coach. I need to see him get a few more catches this game. The Rams just came off a loss. Let's figure out how to get these guys more involved. Similar to what you just said, I have a feeling that the people in the front office are doing the same thing. So um, I know Ernest Jones, he had a knee issue, so he's questionable right now. So I do think the middle of the Rams defense will be a little susceptible right, to those type of players. So I'm going to call that out, number one. Um, number two, Jake, you mentioned it earlier, but two, two at well, we got to get him going. Puka Nakua, Jake, I love it. Right. Him coming up. It's like a track meet. I wrote in my notes. We were playing the Steelers. You see Puka Nakua coming across in that shallow drag. Get your fastest guy to cover him, because if not, he's going to catch the football and he's going to run it pretty damn far. So, <laughs> you know, for Puka, for Puka Nakua, y'all have to figure out how to bracket him. Um, I'm not going to lie. Him, him and Cooper Cub, they're super, they're faster than you think. Right. You think, oh, you know. Cooper Cup, he, he can't run, right? Uh, P Puka Naku, he can't run. She turn turn on that tape, yeah. and it's a strict track meet. I mean, Puka Naku can get those knees up and down, so we're gonna have to bracket him. And the other thing to this, Jake, um, I would talk about it earlier, but it's his tackle, man. RDB since the Eagles game, since we saw Jalen Hurts just take the football and extend plays, I think Dak Prescott can do that the same way, right? The Chargers game, he was running the ball a little bit more than I've seen him do normally, scored a few touchdowns as well, running the ball. And so I think Dak is going to take a page out of Jalen Hurts' uh, playbook. Be like, oh, these fools can't tackle once I break past five yards. And so the Rams defense, we got to get that done. And another thing I'll call out too, Jay Tuck, I talk about it every week, but Michael Hoyt, he got a sack, a sack and some pressures last game. That's because what we've seen on tape is him always dropping back and him getting exposed. So this game, I think the Steelers didn't account for that. They're like, oh, he's going to drop back. You know, he's not going to rush. And he, he came free and he got a sack. But I think this game, 
Michael Hoyt when it comes to some of those crossing routes, right? Hoyt has a lot of time to zone in this coverage, right? He has like the hash to the numbers. A lot of times he gets in the situation where you get a track meet guy run across his face and he can't cover him, right? T.J. Watt is a little bit different. T.J. Watt can drop back in coverage, intercept the football. <laughs> He's like a DB, linebacker, and defensive end all in one. Michael Hoyt is not exactly T.J. Watt. <laughs> so I think the Cowboys will, will exploit that. You talk about Schoolmaker not getting active. I think when you see Michael Hoyt drop back, I think Schoolmaker can go right at him, catch the football, and get busy because teams have been doing it all year. So, Jake, I, I'll take a step back from that. You know how I feel about dropping defensive ends and Michael Hoyt, but <laughs> – that those are those are my takeaways. The Leaving Rams episode one seventy five, the vent session. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the the first key here to victory for the Rams, in my opinion, um, is going to be to run the football. It's like what Jay Tuck said: you have to run the football. Um, that is the best way to slow down a pass rush because you can't rush the passer if there's no passer to to rush uh yeah. so <laughs> don't, run, don't run the ball air it out a little bit you know <laughs> <laughs> so so last week um obviously 29th ranked run defense rams run it 30 times with their running backs daryl henderson took uh 18 um rice freeman looked good as well took 12 um I think they need to keep that up. Uh, you know, I think this week also they got to use more screen game. Uh, I've been saying it consistently. The bubble screen, they've used seven. It's gone for 13 yards with Puka Nakua. That's not good. Uh, yeah. Tutu Atwell, two catches, 13 yards. I think this team desperately, Sean McVay, what, what a lot of people don't understand is he was big early on in his uh, Rams tenure. Two things he did really well, and he had one player to do it, was the screen game. Uh, the bubble screen game and the jet sweeps. And both of those was, were run Woods. incredibly well with Robert Woods and mm -hmm. Robert Woods is no longer on the team. So Cooper cup as good as he is. He doesn't do it as well as Woods did. I think this is the game where Tutu Atwell needs to take over. He needs to be that guy in the short game, be that bubble screen guy. Everyone can block. We know that you can't play football on Sean McVay's team if you can't block. So I think that's the key is you got to run the ball. You got to get the short passing game going. Miles Gaskin might be active. I'm really excited for that opportunity. I think he's great in the passing game. And then number two, you have to be able to protect Stafford. Like if so, not only do you have to run the ball, but eventually you'll have to throw it. And when you throw it, you can't let number 11 eat your quarterback. You just, mm. you can't. And he can do that. I think I've said before, Cam, you know, my thoughts on him. I think he's the closest thing to Aaron Donald as far as a preparation, uh, work ethic, and just skill set. Uh, he Jalen is, Carter too from the Eagles as well, right? Not to bring up the Eagles, but well, yeah, Jalen Carter, but like yeah. Jalen Carter as position. I think Micah Parsons as yeah. far as that next best defensive player. Everyone talks about Bosa and Miles Garrett. I think Parsons does more than anybody. So uh, personally, you 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 have to you know stop him. Uh, whether that's putting Henderson out there in the chip or, uh, you know, Ronnie, um, or not Ronnie, excuse me, Royce Freeman, um, you have to get somebody on him at all times. Sean McVay has done this before with inexperienced tackles, had Bobby Evans on, I think it was Monday Night Football years ago. Uh, he had Kulo Max screaming off the edge and just chipped him every single play and kept him in. That's what you have to do. And mm -hmm. still, the Cowboys have plenty to get to you, but you need to make sure number 11 doesn't beat you. That's the number <laughs> yeah. two. And number three, Dak can throw some interception balls every single game. I don't have to tell you that. There's at least one a game. They need to come down with it. The Rams <laughs> need to come down with it. It is a bad omen when they drop those things and, and they dropped the one against the Cardinals. They dropped it three times against the Steelers. The thing knocked off three different defenders. I've never seen anything like it. No one caught it. <laughs> Those come back to buy you. So you need to get those turnovers. Um, let's wrap this thing up here. Jay Tuck, uh, do you have any bold predictions to go with maybe a score prediction or anything like that? Yeah, I think this is going to be a good game. I think ultimately the Cowboys should separate in the fourth quarter. I have the Cowboys winning 28 to 17, but I have it <laughs> huge. Brandon Cooks, 
redemption game. Oh, okay. And, you know, All right. <laughs> I got Brandon Cooks, you know, continue what we saw versus the Chargers because I feel like CeeDee Lamb, it naturally is going to get a lot of the attention. Michael Gallup, once again, hasn't shown me he can win, but Brandon Cooks, I believe he can. So I expect a big game from Brandon Cooks. So I got the Cowboys winning 28-17 over the Rams. <laughs> I like that. You talk about Brandon Cooks with the Archer comeback. I, I do think there's going to be some trickery there with him. Um, I think on the special team side, and you talked about Parsons, number 11, Jake. I can't believe we didn't bring him up at the very top of the show. But what I will say is, you know, Sean McVay deals with Aaron Donald every day in practice. So the Rams offensive line, you know, sometimes you get used to get beat every day. So let's not bring that in to when we see Michael Parsons. Michael Parsons, let's treat him like Aaron Donald. We do in practice, get extra chip, chips, extra help just to make sure he doesn't, you know, mess up our day. But what I will say, 27, 24 Rams. I got I got to go with the Rams, uh, but I do think it'll be, a, it'll be a close one. I do think Tutu Atwell is going to get active. I think Hen Dog, um, <laughs> Daryl Henderson, Hen I think he's going he, <laughs> to he's going to find the end zone a couple of times. Um, I think Michael Parsons will have a sack, um, but I'm praying not a sack fumble. Um, I, I will say that the Rams will protect the football. <laughs> we'll protect the football this week because we did it last week. We let J.J. Watt pick the football off. And Jake, I, I mean, J.J. Watt is a great player. Uh, our guy Ike told us that he's like a DB, but I don't want to hear it. If you see a defensive back back there, let's not have him intercept the football. So we're going to protect the football this week. We're going to run the football well, and we're going to stop Michael Parsons. 27-24 Rams. <laughs> Jake, what are your thoughts? I got 27-20. <clears throat> I think that the Rams do win this game because uh, they have to win this game. They have to, you know, I, look, I had, I don't think I've ever seen Sean McVay as upset after a game on his own show, the Sean McVay show. Normally it's like, all right, you know, he's still talking about the officiating. He's still, he's, and then afterwards they, they wrap it up and normally he makes a joke. He's like, all right, well, you guys are holding me up. I got to go and watch film and get ready for Dallas. No, he's like, man, I, I still can't believe we lost that game. Like he's still on that thing. So I think they, they bounce back here. I think they get it together. The Rams have been in every single game. And, you know, I think that's really the most important thing is that they've been every single game. They're battle tested. They've gone up against the Eagles, the Bengals, the 49ers, the Seahawks. That's four playoff teams right away in the first seven games. Uh, the Steelers aren't exactly a tough game either, or aren't, aren't exactly not a tough game. So I look at this and I see a team that won. The Cardinals beat them. And, you know, you beat the Cardinals by, what, 17? So I think there's there's something there. But I know Sean McVay doesn't overlook any opponent. So I think they're going to go into this game. They're going to know what Brandon Cooks can do because he played football for the Rams. Um, you know, they're going to know what Dante Fowler can do. They're going to know those guys. But I also expect them to be able to, you know, put together a good game plan against the Micah Parsons. Also, this team, you know, these two teams faced each other last year. And there were some moments in that game where the Rams had an opportunity. And then we're looking at the scoreboard and like, how is this, how is this like nearing a blowout? Like they were just in it. And it was Cam Akers. Cam Akers did not run the ball well. He missed a, a bunch of holes in that game. There were opportunities to run the football. I'm a Florida State guy. I'm a Florida State guy. <laughs> I'm, I'm, hey, I'm saying, man, I'm saying Daryl Henderson, however, is a superior back. He's back. Then you got, you know, Royce Freeman. They're coming off 130 yard performance or whatever. I think they're going to be able to run the ball in this game. I think they're going to be able to run the ball. Their gap scheme is going to work, despite the fact that it seems kind of difficult to run in between the trenches, uh, inside the trenches against this team. But I think they're going to be able to do it. And I think Tutu Atwell is going to be used more than he's been used since week one. And I think that's what's going to lead the Rams to a 27-20 win. I think Atwell got the best of Trayvon Diggs last time out. This time, there's no Trayvon Diggs. And you mentioned the cornerbacks are susceptible. Um, I think Deron Bland is playing absolutely fantastic football based on what I've seen. Um, and Gilmore is just, you know, Gilmore is going to give McVay nightmares because he won the Super Bowl for the Patriots. So we're you know, staying away from Gilmore. But I do expect them to test deep down the field, test that secondary out. And I think they're going to get one to two big plays where things are just going to come together. They're going to use more play action and the Rams win this one 27, 20. 
a lot of hopeism. Jay Tuck, what you think? Any last words for the folks? <laughs> yeah, I just hope that the Dallas Cowboys aren't looking past the Rams and focusing on Philly. Mm-hmm. I think that would be a huge mistake because I feel like this is going to be a difficult challenge for the Dallas Cowboys, honestly. And of course, Cowboys fans don't want to hear that, right? They want to hear me come on here and say 40 to zero, we can't be beat. But I just think that what the Rams do well, I've seen the Cowboys struggle against this year. Like you said, if they're able to get Henderson, you know, I'm not a member of what was his name, uh, CJ Anderson, the playoffs, right? I don't want to have that type of game oh yes yeah still double, get, double just, hundred <laughs> yard games <laughs> goodness you know so we can't let that happen so i think that the cowboys defense can come out and stop the run but the offense and passing situations there are pass rushers and you know and weapons go do what they do best and we do know matt stafford will turn the ball deron bland will come over come down with it so it's gonna be a fun game <laughs> on sunday Hey, that is one thing that we're all a little concerned with. Matthew Stafford throwing a late game interception uh, or just putting him in a bad position. We've seen it. Also, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this. They're going to be having a kicker that's never kicked an NFL game. They just got rid of Brett Maher. I think they missed out. I think Maher revenge game would have been fun. Uh, They got rid of him. They signed a uh, Lucas. I totally forgot his name already. Um, <laughs> hey, he, he better make them field goal. That's all I know. Them extra point. <laughs> yeah, this we went through a similar situation this year with Brandon Aubrey, a guy we got out of the USFL and all camp when I was out there in Oxnard. He was wide left and wide right, and thus far, he's been, he's been really good. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, you never know. You never know. So. Yeah, no, Lucas Haversick, uh, who had a 64% field goal kicking rate in college. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so apparently he worked out with Matt Gay, who was the kicker that the Rams should have signed. And uh, <laughs> and then um, he also has experience with the special teams coordinator, uh, the assistant special teams coordinator, Jeremy Springer, uh, from his days at Arizona. So there's familiarity there. Uh, I don't feel great about it. Personally, I'd rather go for two-point conversions. I'd rather go for it on fourth down every time or just punt it. Uh, but that's just where I'm at. So that's going to do it, though. Jay Tuck, we appreciate you. We appreciate you guys. This has been a, a fun time and uh, hopefully the Rams are able to get this win. Cause if not, they're going down to three and five and they were three and five at that time last year. So we don't want to talk about last year, but <laughs> Hey, life comes at you fast. Exactly. Get this cry. win, move on. <laughs> then you got the Packers without Aaron Rodgers, So you feel better about that this year. Right. But anyway, Jay Tuck, we appreciate your time. And uh, just be sure to uh, follow us. You can follow uh, me at JK Bogan on socials. You can follow Cam at Cameron Lynch 50. You can follow JTuck at JTuck 151. We will see you guys on the flip, but enjoy the weekend. Enjoy the game. And we'll see you soon. Later, folks.